Hello oh. guys, I remember to wear my suit for this one. Today we are going to be interviewing the man himself, Joe Bartolozzi. Let's do this. Alright guys, we are now going to interview the main man himself, Joe Bartolozzi. Now we messaged him. Yo, what's up man? Nothing much, bro. How about you? Not much. Uh. Cool. Cool. You ready for the interview? Yes. I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Shoot. What's the first question? Okay. So, motherfucker. Sorry. My mic's, my mic's going a little low. Anyways, so m I just spoke with uh, Moist Critical, and he asked me to ask you a couple questions. Uh, so first off, uh, what inspired you to start streaming? That's a good question. I watch YouTubers a lot, mainly Pyrocynical on YouTube. And when I was watching his content, I was like, man, I really want to make content like him one day. Mm -hmm. So I finally took that first leap and began making reactions to stuff. Nice. What would you say, uh, how, what would you say to young children that watch your videos that uh, are trying to be a streamer? Be yourself, don't listen to the hate, and work your ass off. Because I can tell you the most important thing in growing on YouTube is putting in the work and never giving up. But I also want to emphasize, be yourself. Don't try to be like someone else. That is a pretty good, that is some pretty good advice. Um, third question, what is your opinion on the GTA 5 game? I absolutely love it. It's my favorite game out of all the GTA ones, and all Rockstar games in general. The map is great, the stories have great writing, and the characters are very interesting. As well as the fact that it's very fun and satisfying to play all around fantastic game. Nice. Um... What, um, you want to, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, what do you think of the Deadpool and Wolverine movie that just came out? I loved it. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are the perfect actors to portray those two characters. The jokes are great. The action is fantastic. And it's overall the best Marvel movie in a while. I, uh, Moist Critical said like almost the exact same thing. So that's pretty sick. Cool, I'm glad we agree. Uh, what's the next question? Okay, this is a huge one, but this, this is more of like a rumor that's been going around. So there's rumors that you are a man-eating, you are a flying man-eating man bat, bat, man bat. You're not Batman, but you're a, a man-eating man bat. How do you respond to those rumors? Ah, that's a pretty good one. I would say those are all false. I'm just a regular ass human. I don't got any bat wings, no fangs, and I don't turn into a bat at night. So those rumors are not true. Fuck. Um, my, my, my brother was kind of hoping that was true. So I'm going to have to break the news to him. Thankfully, that's not true, though. So anyways, um... <laughs> Haha, ha. sorry to let him down. But I'm afraid there's no bat human hybrids out there. Um What are your opinions on the Spider Man movies that Toby Maguire was in? Very good, in my opinion. Those movies basically started the superhero genre of movies, and they still hold up relatively well. The writing is great. Toby Maguire is a fantastic Peter Parker. The action and CGI are great considering they're from the early two thousands. Overall, Fantastic trilogy. Nice. So, I'm going to interview Walter White, Jesse Pinkman, and basically every other character from Breaking Bad. You got any uh, advice? Like, you got any questions? Sure thing. You could ask them. Who is the most annoying character in Breaking Bad, in your opinion? 
if the events of Breaking Bad happened in real life, what would you say to Walter White? And maybe mm -hmm. just general questions about their experiences working on the show. By the rest of the characters, I'm assuming you mean anyone else besides Walter and Jesse, such as Skyler, Mike, Hank, etc. cetera. Fuck no. Hell no, I'm not speaking to Skyler. <laughs> She's kind of a bitch. Lamau, same. One of the most annoying characters, in my opinion, other than Todd. True. I mean, she's like one of the worst, if not the worst character ever. 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 Her and Hank, too. I hated Hank so much, other than his acting. But Skylar is easily the worst. Can't stand her one bit. Yeah, she's a... Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, she's kind of a bitch. Oh. 100% absolute worst character in the entire show. There's 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 been more rumors about you. Do you do you mind if I ask about them? Well, sure. Ask away, my dude. So there's also rumors and I asked most critical this, but there's rumors that there are rumors about him doing this and now there's rumors about you. So there is rumors that there is a Batman going around at night fighting crime and there's rumors that it is you How do you respond to that? Ah, I've heard about this rumor. I've been asked this question a few different times I have no idea what kind of person would start a rumor about me being some kind of Night vigilante crime fighting Batman. It's pretty funny that I'm even being compared to Batman though because we all know I'm better True that, bro. Uh, hold on just a second. Goddamn. Hey, man, you good? Yeah, it's this mic. Your mic? What's going on with it? It keeps, like, not doing sound, and then I have to turn it off, and then... See that? Sound keeps cutting off. Oh, that sucks. How long have you been using that mic? A year now. God damn. That's a long time and probably not a very good microphone if it's being that shitty now and constantly cutting out. Well, gotta earn what you can get. That's true. Can't argue with that. Well, we can keep going and I'll just speak up a little more to compensate for the shitty mic. All right. What is your personal opinion on me talking to Abraham Lincoln? That'd be an enlightening thing to watch. Honest Dave is one of the most iconic presidents. He did a lot of important things at the right time. I'd be very interested. But I hope this is a hypothetical question. It's not a hypothetical. It's happening. Ah, well then. Damn, good luck. Abraham's gonna kick your ass in that interview for sure. <laughs> um, uh, I might interview JFK next. Got any advice for that? Um, that'd be a very interesting interview too. If you were to interview JFK, I'd ask him, what was it like leading America? Is there anything you regret? And of course, the big one, <laughs> what do you have to say about the assassination? I think I would just tell him to not go in the car that day. That'd be a good idea if it were possible to stop him. But it's not like I've mastered time travel yet. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you could go back in time, what would you do? Definitely save several people who didn't deserve to die. Freddie Mercury, I'd get him to treat his disease before it's too late. Michael Jackson, same deal as Freddie. Kobe Bryant and his family. I make damn sure they don't get on that helicopter. There are a lot more people too, but I think you could probably figure what I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, so when you do live streams, what is your what, what is what is your favorite game that you've live streamed so far? I'd say my favorite live stream game is Red Dead Redemption 2. The story and the characters are fantastic. And the gameplay is very smooth, in my opinion. It's a very chill game to stream. Fair enough. You can't, you can't argue with that logic. 
Um, so there's uh, the just 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 what what do you think about Spider Man Four being a multiverse movie when we've literally had so many other multiversal Spider Man movies? I mean, I feel like maybe they should just come up with something original at this point. I agree. They can't just keep using the multiverse as an excuse to use multiple versions of characters. It gets old after a while. I say do something different, maybe an original plot line for a change. What would your idea be? Personally, I feel like they should do a very unique villain that hasn't been used before. Maybe a storyline where Spider-Man is framed for a crime he didn't commit and the villains team up or something. I'm just throwing out random ideas, but it'd be something like that at least. Yo, that, that was the plot of No Way Home. He was, he was framed for killing Mysterio. He didn't do it. The, the, the villains from the multiverse team up. Oh, yeah, that's true. I meant like a villain who isn't from the multiverse. I guess I'm saying make an original villain from the ground up rather than using existing characters. I get you. I get you. Um. Yeah, I guess No Way Home does contradict my point in a way. I guess I should have been more specific. My bad. You're good. Um, what is your, um, you know, I should probably stop asking those questions. Okay, so hypothetically, this, this, is, this is actually a hypothetical question. You think uh, SpongeBob would kick Homelander's ass in a fight? Oh, 100% SpongeBob would kick <laughs> Homelander's ass in a fight. No question. Would you kick Homelander's ass in a fight? I'd at least put up a good fight um, and maybe get some good hits, but I don't think I would win, honestly. Yeah, um, I feel like Megamind would have a good chance against him, or one of his test dummies would. Oh, Megamind is a whole different story. He definitely body Homelander. Dude's got the tech and the intellect to whoop his ass. If you could whoop any celebrity's ass, who would it be? Or any fictional character. If I had to pick a celebrity, I'm going for Tom Cruise. That would be fun. If I had to pick a fictional character, I think I'd go for maybe the Joker. But I'd have to prepare for that one because he'd probably fight fight dirty. Which Joker are we talking about? Because if it's the 60s Joker, oh, dude, I'm kicking his ass. Oh, no. I'm talking about the 2019 version. The one with Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the 60s one, he'd be easy. Just a silly, campy guy. He'd probably crack a few jokes, then fall down and be taken away after the first punch. Yeah, so um, there's more rumors coming out that you are, in fact, secretly Sam Bucha. How do you respond to those rumors? Okay, this one is absolutely false. I am not secretly Sam Bucha. I'm my own guy. Uh, I appreciate the rumor, though. That's that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, I'm gonna interview Sam Bucha after this. So, what do you got to say about that? Hmm. All right. I will say that Sam Bucha is a very funny person. I've watched his videos before. You're in for a good interview for sure. You know any questions I should ask him? Ooh, tough one. I guess you could ask him what his inspiration is for the videos he makes, what his favorite video he made was, and maybe just some general life questions like family, dating, etc. What's your least favorite video you've made? But I, I mean that in like a respectful way. I've made some pretty terrible gameplay videos in the past. Like when I was really starting out on YouTube, a lot of them are kind of poorly edited and... I have no idea what the hell I was even saying half the time. I've deleted a lot of them, but a few are still up on my channel. And no worries, man. I don't mind talking about this stuff. I appreciate the respect. Yep. What is your opinion on the Spider-Man 3 movie from 2007 that everyone says is like the biggest piece of dog shit Spider-Man movie? Of, of, aside from Spider-Man Lois. I mean, I actually don't mind it that much. 
It's not great by any means, but I feel like it's definitely not the worst Spider-Man movie. There were some fun moments in there, like the dancing scene. But I will admit, the symbiote changing Peter's personality kind of sucked. And the Sandman villain was kind of forgettable. Overall, I'll say it's not the best Spider-Man movie, but it's not the worst either. Uh, that award goes to The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The Amazing, uh, you know, to each his own. Um, so... Did you hear that they're going to make a game where you nuke Lego? You, so you know the man that fell in the Lego ri in the Lego River in the Lego City or whatever. They are now going to make a game where he is so mad nobody saved him that he drowns. He drowns and dies, and he gets so mad about it his spirit comes back and he nukes Lego China. How do you feel about that? Okay, that is pretty crazy. I love dark humor and dark jokes, but I mean, I feel like turning a meme into a game like that might a little bit much. I'll admit, it kind of sounds cool, but at the same time, it's taken a goofy meme way too far. So what do you think of the Hitman games? Hitman is great. One of my favorites, actually. I love how creative you can be with taking down your target. I mean, poisoning someone's food, making it look like an accident, hell, even drowning them in a toilet like you could do in one of the games. The series also has a great balance between serious and humorous, and the story is pretty good. I'm unable to generate a reply that meets our content guidelines. Yeah. Um... Um... What are your opinion on the LEGO Star Wars games? You gotta love the Lego Star Wars games. They're classics, for sure. I grew up playing the original Lego Star Wars on the original Xbox, and I spent hours on it. I recently went back and played the new Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, and damn, it's so good. You can tell they really put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, um... <sighs> Uh, literally every game that has came out ever. Okay, that's a huge question. Since there are over 26,000 video games that have came out, but some of my favorites are Hitman, Red Dead Redemption, Spider-Man, Mortal Kombat, <laughs> Lego games, Minecraft, and GTA. It's honestly a really long list of games that I like, so it'd be hard to name them all. Okay, so... Idea. Idea. Motherfucker. Anyways, I have an idea. Minecraft adds a new story mode. Think about it. I mean, we've been getting updates, 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 but what are we getting? Nothing. We're, we're barely getting anything in return. So I say we add a, an, like an actual playable story mode where there's an end. That's an interesting idea, and I, I get where you're coming from. The Minecraft updates lately haven't been adding as much as we expected. Adding a proper story mode where there's a clear end goal would be pretty cool. I think it could make the game more engaging for players who are looking for a more structured experience. Not a bad idea. Yes, sir. Not a bad idea. Um, so... What are your opinion on hot Cheetos? That that's just a random question, but like you know, opinions. And also, what's your favorite cheese? Okay, so I'm not really a fan of odd flavored Cheetos personally. It's a little weird in my opinion. I like the original flavor and maybe some of the other flavors like hot, but the odd ones like honey bun or cotton candy are just weird to me. And as for my favorite cheese, it's definitely pepper jack. Love that kick of spice. Okay, um, so if you had to choose one Spider-Man actor to never make any movies between Toby Andrew and Tom, who would it be? Oh man, that's a tough one, but I would say Toby Maguire. No hate on him, I love Toby, uh, but I love Tom and Andrew too much. If I had to make a sacrifice, I would pick Toby. Um, what is your opinion on the YouTuber Speed McQueen? 
I had to look into him, but man, he's a little too much for me. He seems way too hyper, like way too hyper. I prefer a calmer energy when it comes to streamers and YouTubers. Speed is just a little too chaotic. Um, what would you say to somebody if they said they poured water all over your gaming setup? Like, get as angry as you can, please. Oh, man, if someone said that, I'd be furious. Like, do you know how much effort I put into setting up my gaming setup? Hours and hours of work. And just to have someone come in and pour water all over it, I would lose it. I would yell, scream, probably flip a table, and seriously consider whether that person is even worth being part of my life. Can you give an example of what you would say? Sure. Oh, hell no, you did not. WTF is wrong with you. Did you not stop to think about all the time and effort I put into setting this all up and you just come in and pour water all over it? Are you stupid? Yeah. Um, so recently, recently, there have been sightings of flying puppy dogs. Like puppy dogs have had wings and they have been flying and they have specifically been German shepherds. But, I mean, they haven't been hurting anyone, but everyone's been afraid of them. So, I mean, let me just ask your opinion. If you saw a flying German Shepherd puppy dog coming right for you, but it wasn't planning on hurting you, would you keep it? Whoa, that's a wild scenario, but okay, I'll give it a shot. If I saw a flying German Shepherd puppy coming towards me, and I knew for sure that it wasn't planning on hurting me, I'd probably try to capture it and take it home. I mean, how cool would that be? to have a flying dog as a pet. Plus, German Shepherds are a loyal breed, so having one as a companion could be pretty awesome. So, what, in your opinion, is the worst soda ever made? Okay, that's a tough one. There are a lot of gross sodas out there. But in my opinion, the absolute worst soda ever made has to be around the holidays, which is the infamous Pepsi firework flavor. That stuff was just awful. It tasted like a mix of burning fire and disappointment. Worst soda ever made, in my opinion. Dude, my opinion, uh, my friend once gave me this Peeps, so, uh, Peeps Pepsi. Holy shit, it was so disgusting that it made me want to commit 68 war crimes. Oh, man, I can relate to the Peeps Pepsi. That stuff was a crime against humanity. I mean, it tasted like liquid diabetes and bunny vomit all in one. It was just wrong. I swear. I'm just going to say it. Pepsi and Coke, literally the same soda. Oh, man. No, I'm going to disagree with you there. Pepsi and Coke taste totally different. I get they're both cola, but the flavors are pretty distinct. Pepsi's definitely sweeter, while Coke's got a more crisp, fizzy bite to it. I know some folks who swear they can't tell the difference, but I can spot a Coke versus a Pepsi in a blind taste test. Definitely not the same soda, in my opinion. You know what? You're right. Um, yeah, Pepsi just seems like that 40-year-old mom drink, you know? Haha, <laughs> dude, that's hilarious. I can totally see that. Pepsi does have a kind of mom vibe to it, huh? Maybe it's the sweeter taste or something. But hey, let's not hate on it too much. Moms are cool too. You're right. Uh, one time, and this is a true story. One time my mom, when she was younger, she said she went skydiving. That's Bro, that's dope. Skydiving takes some serious guts. Your mom must have been pretty wild back in the day. Did she enjoy it? I don't know. She said she was pretty scared. But that's pretty fucking badass if you ask me. Yeah, man, that's really badass. It's always cool to hear about some badass stuff that people we know have done. I can totally understand her being scared, though. Jumping out of a plane ain't for the faint of heart. That's for sure. Yeah. Bad. Hey, there's no need to say sorry. We're just having a chat. No big deal. Is everything okay? Yeah. Um, so apparently, 
Batman is Bruce Wayne. Bro, it's crazy. Bro, no way. Bruce Wayne? You mean the billionaire playboy philanthropist? He's Batman? That's crazy. I never would have guessed. Bro, you know what I don't understand? I mean, I mean, yeah, Bruce Wayne being Batman is crazy, but how is it in the Spider-Man 2002 movie? How is it that nobody ever questions Peter Parker's photography skills? In the Tobey Maguire movie, he takes a picture of Spider-Man on the side of a building and everyone's just going to say, yeah, it looks legit. Or, or... Or he'll take uh -huh, a man, you're right. That's a good point. I mean, Peter's photography skills are pretty top notch, but it does seem kind of ridiculous. No one would question how he got those photos of Spider-Man. Like, how did Peter even get up on the side of those buildings to snap those shots? And how did they turn out so crystal clear at that distance? But hey, it's a superhero movie, right? We got to suspend our disbelief and just enjoy the ride. Hey, and in Spider-Man 3, he said he climbed a flag for when nearly fell off. Oh, man, I remember that scene in Spider-Man 3. Tobey Maguire's Peter really wasn't too graceful in that one. Climbing a flagpole and almost falling off? Sounds like something I would do, except I'd probably fall and break my neck. It was definitely a bit of a goofy moment, but I love that about the old Spider-Man movies. They had these small, funny moments that added to the charm. Dude, Eddie Brock's Venom, or Eddie Tober Grace, was totally a Jameson dick rider, because he's like... I'm going to work for one of the best newspaper editors of all time, J. Jonah Jameson. Holy shit, when I tell you, I wanted to punch him in the face. Haha, ha, I feel you. Eddie Brock was definitely the ultimate Jameson dick rider. He was way too far up Jameson's ass. It was kind of annoying, right? And the way he said, thank you, Mr. Jameson, all the time. Man, it was like he had no self-respect. I get he was trying to impress Jameson, but it was just, just too much. Can't blame you for wanting to punch him in the face! Yeah, America, civil rights. Um, yeah, America land. Who is, uh, one of the most annoying people you've ever met? One of the most annoying people I've ever met? Oh man, that's a tough one. But there was this one guy, let's call him Steve who loved to talk about himself incessantly. He wouldn't let anyone else get a word in edgewise. And all he talked about was his accomplishments, his cars, his fancy job. It was exhausting. He didn't care about anyone else's life, just his own success. Definitely a pain in the ass to be around. Did you ever just tell him to, hey, go fuck yourself? Did you ever just tell him that? Cause yeah. Oh man. I was so tempted to tell Steve off, especially when he wouldn't stop talking about himself. I remember there was one moment where he was literally going on and on about his new sports car, and I had had enough. I just looked him right in the eye and said, hey, Steve, have you ever thought about talking about something other than yourself just for once? It felt good to let it out, and he actually shut up for a second. But then he just brushed it off and went back to talking about himself. Go figure. Okay, so I have a question. There is a, you know what, never mind, scratch that. Um, how often would you say you watch the MCU? Because there's, there's been a rumor going around that you put on toe socks. There's been a rumor going around you put on toe socks and you put on comf comfy pajamas and watch the entire MCU. How do you respond to those rumors? Haha, -ha. who started those rumors? because they are absolutely true. I love watching the MCU and I can't help but get comfy while doing it. I'm talking cozy blankets, comfy pajamas, even the occasional toe socks. When I binge watch the MCU, I go all out. It's like a little ritual. So yeah, those rumors are pretty spot on. No shame in admitting it. Got any, um... I don't... Yeah, I got plenty of um. Om, a.k.a. the universal sound of pure consciousness, the sound of the universe, the sound of enlightenment. It's like the ultimate sound of peace and bliss. I like to meditate on it, chant it, and embrace its power to bring balance and harmony to my life. Om um, is the ultimate sound, bro. Um, give me a second. <laughs>
Do you enjoy any of the Mario games? And if so, which ones do you not enjoy? Oh, Mario games? I love Mario games, bro. I grew up playing them all. NES, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and beyond. My favorites would have to be the OG Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario World. Mario 64 was a game changer, though. It blew me away when I played it the first time. The 3D world and the ability to explore and collect stars changed the game. As for ones I don't enjoy, can't really think of any. Fair enough. Um, so there is a conspiracy theory that the aliens are in control of everything. There's, I mean, there's even a conspiracy theory that you're an alien. How do you have to respond to that one? Ha ha ha. Wow, that's quite a conspiracy theory. The aliens are in control of everything, and I'm supposedly one of them? Well, if I am an alien, I must admit, I am doing a pretty stellar job passing as a human. But seriously, these tinfoil hat theories are just ludicrous. What is the most ludicrous? Uh, do you have any family members that have ludicrous uh, tinfoil hat theories? Ha ha. I think the most ludicrous theory would have to be the flat earth one. I mean, the idea that the earth is flat and we're all just living on a giant disc with an ice wall at the edge, that's just wild. As for family members, I have an uncle who's a bit of a conspiracy nut. He's convinced that the government has aliens locked up in a secret facility and is trying to control our minds with chemtrails. It, it's quite entertaining to listen to him, to be honest. Um, so, uh, two questions. One, um, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, wait, this is more like a saying. But if the Earth was flat, I mean, when the goddamn meteor hit the dinosaurs, the Earth would have just <clears throat> would have broken like a piece of paper. But also, is your uncle one of those Bush did 9-11 conspiracy theorists? Ha ha, right? The meteor would have just shattered the flat earth. I'm unable to generate a reply that meets our content guidelines. Oh, god damn it. Um, where? Okay, so I might uh, wrap this up real quick. But I have a question. The most important question to ever exist in mankind. One that's been questioned for centuries. Are you ready? Oh, man. The most important question ever. I'm ready, bro. Hit me with it. How do you think the pyramids were built? Oh, man, the pyramids, one of the greatest architectural mysteries of all time. Honestly, I've heard all kinds of theories about how they were built. Some say aliens, some say ancient advanced tech. But the most common explanation I've heard is that they were built using thousands of skilled laborers, a whole lot of brute force, and some pretty clever engineering. But man, who really knows? It's a head scratcher for sure. Look, I mean, I just say that like straight up, like straight up, I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I'd just say that, like, I mean, people were built different back then. I mean, people were saying, like, oh, they wouldn't do that nowadays. Eh, it would be too heavy. But, I mean, they didn't really complain about the weight they were carrying because, frankly, they just probably didn't give a fuck. Ha ha, bro. You might be onto something there. I mean, people back then were definitely built different. Uh, they had a different level of resilience and toughness. And you're right, they prob probably just got the job done because they had to, and complaining wasn't an option. Imagine if we had that kind of attitude today. We'd get a lot more done, for sure. Okay, um, uh, I'm about to interview Abraham Lincoln, Walter White, Jesse Pinkman, uh, Saul Goodman, uh, JFK, Walter White, or yeah, JFK. Do you have, uh, uh, I'll get back to you, like, tomorrow is that good and also what question should i ask all of them whoa interviewing lincoln walter white jesse pinkman and saul goodman you're living the dream man as for questions you could ask lincoln about his perspective on leadership and the civil war for walter white you could go for his journey from high school teacher to drug kingpin Jesse Pinkman, ask him about his transformation.
information and growth throughout the series. Yeah. And Saul Goodman, ask him about his tactics as a lawyer, the cases he's handled, and his moral compass. Can't wait to see those interviews, bro. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, it was good talking to you. Uh, uh, yeah, I hope you have a good night, and I'll probably interview you sooner or later. Great chatting with you too, man. Looking forward to that interview whenever it happens. Till then, take care. Take care. Well, you heard it there, folks. Me and Joe Bartolozzi just had a nice chat. Anyways, like and subscribe. Next interview is going to be Walter White and literally every single fucking Breaking Bad character.